Thanks to the log message you implemented in the previous video, you now know that your view is recreated and that the score is reset when you rotate your device. This is due to how Android handles activity life cycles. The typical Android activity life cycle looks something like this. Well, it's good to generally know what happens during the lifetime of an activity. You don't need to know about a lot of the items in this flow diagram at this point. What you do need to know is that an orientation change in an activity results in the current activity being destroyed and a new one being created for this new orientation. This is just how Android handles orientation changes. An orientation change in Android results in what is known as a configuration change. A configuration change can be one of many different things, such as a change to the orientation, as mentioned, or a change in the device language. A configuration change results in part of the above activity flow being enacted. The current activity attempts to save any of the properties specified by the developer. The current activity is destroyed. A new activity is created for the relevant orientation with the save settings, if any being restored in the process. So unlike in say iOS, an activity, or if you prefer a view, might be destroyed and recreated multiple times during the course of a typical application run even if that activity is the main or only activity in the app. So if an activity could be created and destroyed multiple times and it needs to save its properties, where and how do we do this saving of properties? As your activity begins to stop, the system calls a special on save instance state method in your activity so that your activity can save state information. The default implementation of this method saves transient information about the state of the activity's view hierarchy, such as the text in the edit box or the scroll position of a list. However, you can override on save's instant state to save custom information of our own, such as the score for the current for the score for the game or the current time left. On save instant state prefers uh, to save each value by unique identifier. So in order to avoid confusion, let's define the keys and we'll be using to identify the values that we want to store. To get started, open mainactivity.kt and add the following below the list of properties. As you'll notice, we're going to be saving our score in the current time left on the countdown timer. The companion object is just a handy way to keep identifiers or keys for all the saved values together. We currently get the time left only when the countdown timer fires. But if we need to save the time left, then we need to have a property to hold it. Add the following property. We also need to save the current time left to this property when the countdown timer fires. Add the following line as the first line in on tick inside the countdown timer object. Next, we need to override on save instant state. Add the following below on create. For good measure, we've also overridden on destroy so that we can add a log message to see when the current activity is destroyed. But let's take a closer look at what on save instance does. First, you save the current score in the time left on the countdown timer via the passed in on state object, which is a bundle. A bundle is basically a dictionary that is used by Android to pass values across different activities. And if you are wondering, a dictionary is a list of values where you can identify a specific value via a unique key. 
Next, you stop the countdown timer since the activity is about to be destroyed, since on save instance state is being called. And finally, you log that you save the instance state. This saves the current state of the app, but it does not restore it yet. But before we get to that, how about a challenge? 